Okay. So, in the last lecture, we have defined the continuity of the function using the Cauchy and Hennig's definition and both are uh, later on shown to be equivalent. And in that case, we have considered f to be continuous over an interval, but uh, we can extend it. We can take an arbitrary set A, which is subset of R, where the similar way the continuity of the definition of the continuity over the set A, which is subset of or any point A x C belongs to that subset can be introduced. Uh, let me just recall that that uh, we say let A which is a subset of R, a non empty subset of R, a continuous subset of R. Let F is a mapping from A to R and let C be a point in A. Then we say F is continuous at the point C if for a given F signer greater than 0 there exists a delta depends on f sin r and the point c such that such that uh, the mod of f x minus f c is less than f sin r provided mod of x minus c is less than delta uh, so for if x is any point in this side satisfying this then the correspondingly we get uh, this if f fails to be f fails to be continuous at c then we say means if this condition does not hold then f fails to be continuous at c then f is said to be discontinuous function f is discontinuous at c and in the neighborhood form we can uh, say in the neighborhood form is a function a f from a to r is continuous at x equal to c belongs to a if and only if if and only if uh, given any epsilon neighborhood epsilon neighborhood say v epsilon depends on of f c given any epsilon neighborhood of f c there exist there exist a delta neighborhood say v delta c delta neighborhood of c such that such that if x is any point any point x is any point of the a intersection v delta c of the common point of this in, uh, neighborhood and a then means it belongs to the neighborhood then f x belongs to belongs to v neighborhood of epsilon neighborhood of f c that is the image of this image image of this interval the delta neighborhood of c will be contained in the epsilon neighborhood of f c that is what is said and we have seen that graphically also that if uh, here say this one is there. So, this is our function and here this is our say delta. So, this we get B delta C here is our F sin R. this is uh, V F sin R F C C is point somewhere here here is f c this is f c where the c is there so we get given any f signal neighborhood of f c there exists a delta neighborhood this is the delta neighborhood b delta c such that 
image of any point in this will fall inside it then it is a continuous function. So, here c is a point in this neighborhood. Now, it may or may not be the limit point, but if c is a limit point, if c belongs to a is a limit point or is a cluster point that is the limit point and cluster point of a a then the continuity of definition can be written as then f is continuous f it can if and only if the limit of this f x when x approaches to c is f of c and in fact this is um, if you look that Hennis uh, theorem Hennis equivalent definition says there is a sequence x n in the neighborhood which goes to c then the corresponding f x n will go to f c. So, basically it is the same as the Hennis theorem. So, f c it means if a function we want it to be continuity what the condition requires. So, for the continuous for the continuity of the function f x at a point c we need the following condition we need the following conditions ho must hold the first condition is that the limit of the function uh, the function f x must be defined at the point x equal to c where the continuity is tested second port is the limit of this function f x when x approaches to c must exist must exist and third condition is both should be identical third is the limit of f x when x tends to c must coincide with the value f x. If these three conditions are satisfied then we say the function f x is continuous at a point c. So, it using this definition it is very easy to confirm find out whether the function is continuous or not. If suppose in this case any one of the condition fails then we say the function is discontinuous. So, again there are different type of discontinuities that we will discuss later on that if suppose the function is defined limit exists, but both may not be equal then in that case the discontinuity will be the removable discontinuity and so on so forth. So, that we part we will take up later, but using this definition we can so many examples suppose I take f x equal to x square f x equal to x square and we claim is a continuous function on the entire real line r because let choose c as any point in r then what is the limit of f x when x tends to c as we have seen already this is c square which is the same as f of c. So, it is continuity follows similarly the function f x all the polynomials function polynomials they are also continuous function sin functions cosine x tan x where the denominator is not 0 denominator is different from 0 these are all function e to the y etcetera all continuous functions and follows from this definition easily. So, we are not touching for, uh, we are not going in detail the proof of this, but take the limit of this and so much uh, uh, we have already discussed the limit of fun various functions and that will help in identifying whether the given function is continuous or not. Now, let us take the function f x equal to 1 by x. Now, f x equal to 1 by x this function when x is uh, oh, is continuous over the set continuous on the set A of all real line all real numbers so where it is positive because if we take c any point in A. So, obviously, c is greater than 0. So, limit of f x when x tends to c is nothing but 1 by c which is the value of the function at c. So, continuity follows, but f of x which is 1 by x is not continuous is not continuous 
at x equal to 0 because it is not defined at x equal to 0. So, there is no question of continuity lies here, <laughs> but um, similarly if we take the function sin x uh, sorry f x equal to signum of x signum of x this function uh, is not continuous at 0. at x equal to 0. The reason is because the signum function is defined like this when x is negative the signum value is minus 1 0 it is 0 when x is positive it is 1. So, signum function this is the function which is defined as 1 if x is positive 0 when x is 0 and equal to minus 1 when x is negative. So, when you take the limit of this signum function as x tends to 0 the limit will go to 1 and minus 1 when x is tending to 0 from positive side or when x is tending to 0 from the negative side and therefore, limit does not exist limit does not exist at x equal to 0. So, it is not a continuous function. Another example which is also very interesting example let A <coughs> be the entire real line and f defined f is defined as f is defined as the value is 1 if x is rational and 0 if x is irrational irrational. Now, we claim that this function f is not continuous at any point of of r because the reason is simple because suppose I take a point c let us take let if c test it at c which is a rational number say ok. Now, every rational number can be approximated by means of the sequence of irrational. So, there exists a sequence x n of rational irrational point irrational numbers in r whose limit is this is c, but what is the behavior of uh, what is the value of x n, but x n when x n is rational is 0 always for each n. Therefore, the limit of this f x n when n tends to infinity will also be 0, which differs from the limit, but limit is c because c is a rational number. So, the value of this is 1 according to this. So, it is not uh, continuous at any rational point inside. Similarly, we can show that it is also discontinuous at every irrational point, every irrational points in the real line R in a similar way. A function however, is modified and made it rational at some point and that function is let us define let a be the set of all real number which are greater than 0 positive. Then define the function define h function h h follows. follows define h on a h follows. So, h of x equal to say 0 if x is greater than 0 a rational number is a uh, irrational number. If this is irrational number we are taking 
h of x to be 0 and equal to 1 by n if x is a rational number m by n which is in the lowest form m by n which is in the lowest form uh, natural number m n n and the lowest form is that means m n is 1 the uh, divisor the greatest common divisor of this is 1 where so let us define the x if it is rational number is of the form m by n we will write 1 by n and if x is irrational then we will write to be 0 now we claim that h this function h is uh, basically is uh, discontinuous at every at every rational number in a in a but it is continuous continuous at every irrational number in a so let's see the proof for it the solution is <coughs> suppose i take first a rational number let us take a b a take a which is greater than 1 0 as a rational points in a so we can find a sequence so there is a sequence x n of irrational numbers irrational points which which converges to a okay but what is the value of f x n h s x h x n h x n is defined to be 0 for every rational point so along this 0 x this sequence h of x n will be 0 but what is the h of a h of a is given to be what if it is rational number then it will be some say 1 by n or whatever may be which is positive which is positive so here the limit of h s h x n as n tends to infinity will come out to be 0 because for all points the values are 0 so limit will be 0 and here the limit h value is coming to be non zero therefore this limit of h x n over n is differs from the value of the function at a point a so when a is rational it is not a continuous function so h is not continuous at any rational numbers in a let us see the irrational point so suppose b is a irrational point b belongs to a is a irrational point is an irrational number is a relational number. So, when b is a relational and let us choose f sin r greater than 0. So, for this given f sin r we can identify a integer. So, a natural number. So, there exists a natural number n such that 1 by n naught can be made less than f sin r which is possible by uh, our Archimedesian properties. So, this now let us consider an interval the interval if I take the interval b minus 1 b plus 1. Now, in this interval b can get the rational point whose denominator is greater than n naught as well as less than n naught. Okay. So, what we claim is that the, the uh, uh, national with denominator less than n naught. There are only b choose a neighborhood or choose an interval interval b minus 1 b plus 1 and choose an uh, interval then there are obviously there are 
uh, only a finite only fi a finite numbers of rational finite only finite um, number of rationals of rationals finite number of with denominator denominator less than n naught because the, obviously when this denominator less than n naught it will get all than n naught this will follow this will follow and b minus 1 here b will get somewhere uh, number so it will approach towards this number okay so v is a, any arbitrary number we can get hence we can choose choose a neighborhood a neighborhood b minus delta b plus excuse it so we can get the neighborhood b minus delta b plus delta which contains which contains uh, which contains no rational number with no rational numbers with numbers with denominator less than with denominator less than n naught less than n naught means with this neighborhood we can find v minus delta b plus delta where all these point x n whatever the number the denominators will be having the denominator greater than n naught ok so it will satisfy this condition that is what we wanted to have that neighborhood ok so once you have this neighborhood then then clearly then if x uh, then for any x we satisfy this condition x minus b is less than delta uh, delta where the x belongs to a b have mod of h x minus h of b but h of b is 0 because b is irrational and the function is defined rational to be 0. So, this is h of x h of x means x is of the form say 1 by n. So, this is 1 by n and this will be less than 1 by n naught 1 by say n naught or 1 by n h x x is equal to 1 by n. So, which is less than equal to 1 by n naught. So, this will remain less than epsilon help therefore, following epsilon neighborhood of this we can find that is a delta such that for all x lying between this the function h x minus h b less than epsilon. So, this shows the h is continuous at irrational point or irrational points in a and that is prove the result. Okay. <coughs> Now, one more thing which we have um, a remark, we have seen the continuity of the function in terms of the limit. If suppose the limit does not exist, but the function is well defined everywhere except uh, the limiting point, then the two possibility are there either the limit will exist function is defined everywhere except the point where the continuity is required. So, the possibility is when you take the limit of the function x when x tends to that point limit may or may not exist. If it exists then we can redefine the function in such a way so that the new function so obtained becomes continuous. So, that is the remark here sometimes suppose suppose a function a suppose a function f from a to r is not continuous is not continuous because the value of the function at that point is not continuous at a point c because the value of the function f c is not defined is not defined. 
then the two possibility then but the limit of this function limit of uh, say uh, f x limit of f x when x tends to that c exists then we can we can redefine the function function capital F as follows capital F x is equal to the limit of F x when x tends to c c for x equal to c we are defining this and f of x for x belongs to a which is not c different from c minus c ok minus c that point the function is not defined in fact is c ok so this so that is equal to suppose l now we claim this f is continuous is continuous is continuous at c because f is already given to be continuous function except at and is continuous except at at the point c so when you take any point x uh, sorry function f x is not defined only at c and rest of the point it is defined so when you take the limiting value of the function f x this is comes out to the value of the function f at the point c so limit of this f x when x tends to c is equal to f of c and that is equal to limit f x exists. So, this function is continuous. It means the original function f from the original function we can remove the continuity, uh, we can remove the point of discontinuity and made it to be continuous function and this way we call it that point to be a removable discontinuous point. Okay, this. But if if the limit of the function, if a function does not have a limit c, if a function, if a function g from a to r does not, does not have a limit, does not have a limit as c, does not have the limit as c then there is no way there is no way that we can obtain we can obtain uh, there is no way that we can obtain a function g a union c uh, here we write on a union c this is what left 2 r ok 2 r please check it ok 2 r that is so a union c there we can that is continuous that is continuous at c by defining by defining by defining uh, g x h equal to c for x is equal to uh, say capital C, I am just saying capital C okay, for x equal to C and g x for x belongs to A, x belongs to A. The reason is uh, because if we assume this way, then what happen? Because the reason is this, because what is the limit of g x when x tends to C? this is giving to be if it exists if it exists then it is giving to be the c but this 
limit when x tends to c it is equivalent to which is equivalent to say the limit of this g x when x tends to c exist because if this limit exists it means when x is different from c the g x is defined like this small g. So, when you are choosing the limit of g x when x approaches you have you are for all x we are differs from c the g will be replaced by small g. So, limit of this and if this limit exists this will exist which will contradicts must also exist and equal to c and equal to capital C, but this is not given which is a contradiction which is which contradicts. Therefore, we cannot define redefine the function so that it becomes continuous that is what it is. Now, let us take an example in support of this. Suppose I take a function g f x equal to sin 1 by x for x different from 0. Okay. Then it does not have a limit at x 0 0. Hmm. Then this function is not continuous at x equal to 0, because we cannot define the value of the function at the point 0, because at the point 0 the function uh, f is not defined since f is not defined at x equal to 0, f is not defined at x equal to 0, uh, because it does not have a limit, because this does not have a limit, uh, uh, is not defined at 0, because the limit of this sin 1 by x as x tends to 0 does not exist. And this we have seen already that if we take x equal to 1 by pi, the limit of the function limit of sin 1 by x, x tends to 0 will go to 0. When you take x equal to odd multiple of pi by 2, the limit of this function will go to 1 and like so on or there is a loss of fluctuation. In fact, the if we go for the limit then <coughs> this is 1 by pi, 1 by 2 pi, 1 by 3 pi and like this. So, there is a loss of fluctuations is there like this okay? something like goes. So, uh, it has a positive negative value in the neighborhood of 0. So, the fluctuation exceed by f sin l therefore, it cannot be continuous also and again limit also we can say that it does not exist. The second example if we look the function f x which is x sin 1 by x suppose I take for x is not equal to 0. Okay. The function in that case f x is not defined at x equal to 0 at x equal to 0 then the function cannot be continuous at this point then f x cannot be continuous at x equal to 0, but however if I define the redefine the function as follow. So, if we define b if we redefine the function capital F x from r to r means r to r such that f of x the value is 0 if x is 0 and equal to x sin 1 by x for x different from 0. If I redefine this function then what happens then clearly f is continuous at x equal to 0 why because the limit of this x sin 1 by x as x tends to 0 is 0 because it is dominated by x. So, limit will come out to be 0 which is the same as the f of 0. So, this case continuity follows therefore, this function for this function 0 is the uh, removable 
continuity okay the okay now there are certain properties uh, of the continuous functions which we will just is there yeah, some results or uh, results on continuous functions on combinations of continuous function combinations combinations of continuous functions so i will just state the results and the result is uh, for any arbitrary point it is true so i will just give the general results let a which is a subset of r and let f and g be continuous on a on a or, or at a point let us take this uh, f and g be continuous on a a to r be a continuous function uh, functions a to r no uh, be a functions be functions on a to r and let and let b belongs to r okay suppose that suppose that c is an element in a and and that f and g are continuous are continuous uh, at c then the following results holds then f plus g f minus g f g b f and uh, they are all continuous at c and if if h is a mapping from a to r is continuous is continuous at c belongs to a and if h of x is not equal to 0 for all x belongs to a then the quotient f by h is continuous is continuous at c so the results follow now this can be extended to a one uh, as a corollary or theorem the same results holds if f and g let a which is subset of r and let f and g be continuous be continuous on a to r and let b belongs to r then f plus g f minus g f minus g product f g and b f are continuous on a and similarly b horse similarly similarly b horse horse a java on the set a so i am not writing that is what true okay this one the proof is uh, uh, just based on the uh, earlier cases we have seen the function f is limit function is there limit of f x plus g x is limit of f x plus f x g x so sim based on this we can write down the proof for it okay now another results are again without proof let a which is a subset of r and let f 
is a mapping from A to R and let mod f mod f means absolute value of this f x <coughs> be defined be defined by mod of f x means equal to the modulus of f x for all x belongs to A. Then if f is continuous at a point c at a point c belongs to a then mod f is also continuous then mod f is also continuous at c okay then second part is if f is continuous if it continuous on a then mod f is thought continuous on it is continuous on a similarly if our domain if a uh, is continuous if a f is a if f x is greater than or equal to 0 for all x belongs to a for all x then then the following result so then f is continuous continuous at a point c belongs to a at a point c belongs to a, then uh, f then under root of f is also continuous at c and if if f is continuous on a on a then under root f is also continuous on a we are we are under root f x is defined as the under root of f x for x belongs to a x x belongs to a and f of x is greater than 0 that is what. So, similar results holds and we are not proving uh, giving that because it is very easy to show the proof of all these results. So, we are just skipping the proof for it. Okay. Now, next result which is interesting composition of the continuous function composition of continuous functions functions ok. Suppose we have the function f and g both are uh, say one is continuous at uh, some point and other is also continuous in a, set, a point where the range set is contained in this then we get the component. So, let us let f is a mapping from a to r b is a continuous at a point c. Let this is continuous at a point c. If f which is continuous at a point c and if and if g which is a mapping from B to R is continuous is continuous at a point B which is the image of C under F then the composition function composition G composition F is continuous is continuous at a C okay function at a C and here we assume here 
we assume that image of A uh, under F is contained in B. So, the function is well defined domain in this and G F x means G of F x this is the meaning. Okay. So, let us see the proof of this this is the result. What he says is suppose I take this one suppose this is the set A this one is the set say B this one is the set say C F is a mapping from A to B G is a mapping from B to C okay? and this now what is given is F is continuous at a point C. So, here we are getting f of c that is equal to b, g is continuous at a point b. So, here you are getting g of b. Okay. <coughs> so, since g is continuous at the point b, g is continuous at a point b. So, what we get? So, there is a neighbor, let So, let us take a epsilon neighborhood of g b. So, let w B an epsilon neighborhood, epsilon neighborhood of G B. Let us consider this epsilon neighborhood of G B. Say here, this is in this inside. This is epsilon neighborhood of W. So this is W. Take the epsilon neighborhood of W as an epsilon neighborhood of G B. Now G is continuous. Since G is continuous at B, so there is a since G is continuous at B, so there exists a delta neighborhood, delta neighborhood V of a small b, which is the value of the function at C, such that whenever the by belongs to the B intersection of V, then G B image of this by under V belongs to W. This is by definition. So, what he is saying is if I picked up a for corresponding to this epsilon neighborhood, we can find a delta neighborhood of this that is V such that whenever the any point lies in the intersection of V and this, the image will fall within this range. So, by definition of the continuity of G at a point B. Now, further further g is giving to uh, f is giving to be continuous further f is continuous continuous at a point c at a point c this is given so so there exist a uh, say gamma neighborhood of c gamma neighborhood say u of c such that such that if x belongs to a intersection u a intersection u then the image will go f x will go to b intersection v v intersection b so that so what we get the composition mapping g of f x this will be equal to g of f x and that belongs to w. So, what he says is that if since f is continuous at c, so for given this delta neighborhood of this we can find a gamma neighborhood of c such that the any point which lies inside this gamma neighborhood gamma intersection a the image will go to v and every point which is in v the image will go to w so g composition a f x will go to w that's what is said but since w is but since since w is an arbitrary epsilon neighborhood w is an arbitrary small epsilon neighborhood of g b. So, this shows that this implies 
that G composition F is continuous at C. Because for any arbitrary small epsilon, uh, there exist a neighborhood, uh, say gamma neighborhood of uh, say U of point C such that image of any point uh, one holds such that one holds. So, this implies this is continuous function for this. Okay. So, we get this uh, now we wanted to do some more maximum minimum also for that. Uh, let me just define the maximum and minimum theorem first the definition maxima maximum and minimum we have already stated the local maximum local minimum here just it will be required definition let a be a subset of r and let f f which is a mapping from a to r Okay, we say f has an absolute magna <coughs> f has an absolute maxima maximum on the set A if there is a point there is a point say x star in A such that the value of this x star under f will always be greater than the value of f x for all x belongs to a. Then we say the function f has an absolute maxima on the set a. Then we say we say f has an absolute absolute minima minimum on a if there if there is a point there is a point uh, uh, say x star if there is a point x lower star i am saying belongs to a such that the f of lower image of this lower x star is less than equal to f x for all x belongs to A. Then we say x star is an absolutely uh, then lower absolute minimum for it. The x star is called the absolute maximum point, x lower star is called the absolute minimum point if they exist. x star is called the absolute maximum point and x lower star is called the absolute minimum point if they exist. Okay? And let us see. So, we will continue next time this one. Thank you.